Well, good afternoon, folks. My name is Tommy Thompson. Uh, this video is mostly intended for the uh, upcoming clinic that I'm going to be, do, be doing in Russia. Uh, but basically, this is how to uh, what false data is. Data is just data. You know, uh, data says you have five apples, and your piece of paper says you have ten. You don't have ten. It's just data. It's not good data. It's not bad data. It's just data. But if you get false data, if you think you got ten apples, and then you go try to sell ten apples, and you only have five, you have a problem. Uh, maybe not just a technical problem, but you got some kind of difficulty, some unwanted condition there, because you were operating off of false data. If you add two and two, and you get four, but unknown to you, there's another one in there, you get five. It's false data. It's easy for a person to see that there is false data. Data is just information about something. Either it's good, fault, good, uh, true data, or it's false data. It's a lie. It's it's not really true. Of course, there's degrees and no degrees of untruth, but we're just talking about in reality, uh, false data is something that says something is one way, and it's another way. Maybe it'd be a little different. Maybe it's completely 180 degrees off to the other side. Uh, but the thing is, it's false data. Now, false data in math or something like this is easy to find. It's easy to work with. Uh, you know, you got count up your apples and you think you got five and you go count them again and somebody weigh them and you know there's only four. It's pretty obvious that that data was false. Where we get into things is where a person accepts data about something, gets the idea that it's this way, uh, particularly as little kids, because you think that, you know, your limited knowledge and your ability to perceive, you think that things are this way, that, uh, you know, horses fly or Santa Claus comes, so you believe in that. They told you that, so you don't have any no, you just believe it. Well, uh, we all know that Santa Claus brings you presents is false data. Santa Claus don't bring you presents. It's your mama or your daddy or your friends or somebody, but Santa Claus don't bring you a present. There's no such thing. Or the Easter Bunny, rabbit that lays eggs. There's no such thing. See, this is false data. Everybody knows it's false data. But a little kid doesn't necessarily know. So you tell him this and that and the other thing. And if you're a big winning personality and successful in things and he's not doing too good, he's going to be like you. Because he's got this false data. He, he, anyway, a, a datum is either true or it's false. And there's degrees of right and wrong and everything else. But the bottom of his difficulties is in his, in his, in his work, in his life, in, his, in everything he does, really, that he's trying to operate in. Uh, if he's got bad data in it, he's going to fall down. He's, gonna, he's not going to have the ability to perform the activity. You know, he, he, so he wants to sell five apples, he's only got four apples. He can't possibly sell five if he only has four. Uh, so that's what this video is going to be about. Now there's, there's a little rundown, a technique that is used to find this false data about something that's basically not really known by the person. See, if you get two plus two is six, you pretty much know that's wrong. But if you got a data like that you don't know is wrong, like there is a Santa Claus, or all horses sleep in beds, or it doesn't make any much, any difference how much a politician uh, spends, it's good for society. 
course it makes a big difference what politician spends. Spends all the money and bad for society. So, but we are taught by our environment, the people around us, the people we love, the people that brought us up, and the life that we're forced to, to live in, that these things are true. Because everybody says they're true. Or it seems like everybody says they're true. But if you really went around and ask everybody about it and really pinned them down and quizzed them about it, they, they would say, no, they was, that wasn't true. There wasn't really a Santa Claus. Even though he, they believed in it, it was a good idea and all that, but only for kids. See? So he's just saying that he's passing this false data on to people that can't sort it out because an adult, you know, looks around and kicks a tree and Santa Claus don't falls out and he figures out pretty fast that there isn't really any such thing. But a little kid doesn't. So we get a lot of false data. Uh, it's not our fault. It's not anybody else's fault. It's not bad that we got false data. It's not good. You know, I'm not supposed to be ashamed. Uh, it's just data. Does a, a calculator or something get sad because it got the wrong numbers in it? No, it don't. It just sits there. That's the way you should be looking at all of your data. Because you're basing your life on them. You're basing not just, you know, five apples, but you're basing your whole whether you can buy your next house or how much your job's going to make you or how much is that new wife going to cost or you have a lot of data there that you need to juggle. And if you get false data in there, you're going to have a problem with it. Uh, so usually where most false data comes from is just verbal people talking, telling you how to do something. This is why... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. This is the way you do something. You know, you go to drill that hole and drive that nail and pour that concrete over there, and that's how you do it. Oh, well, that's all you know, so that's what you do. But if he tells you it's backwards or something, you see, pour the concrete, then to drive the nail, it ain't going to work out. you got to drive the nail first, then pour the concrete on top of it. So you can have false data about the sequence of the way things go. Uh, you could have, you know, just no data at all. How many guys are over there? I don't know, boss. No data. You know, that's it's not true data. They said there's nobody. Well, no, that's false data. But there, there's there's not a field in all of society where this false data is just not all through it. I mean, take art. You know, this is good. That's bad. And and what what is any of it? It's a bunch of opinions. They can be right or wrong. It doesn't make any difference. But one guy's going to take it. You know, that's false data. He's going to think that the Redskins beat the Broncos, or one football team beat another football team. That one's better than the other. Uh, it's all false data. You see? Yay! We won. No, we didn't win. That team won. You were just saying hooray. So, we, we look at these little lies and things. Uh, the, the problem is, when a person gets this false data, usually he doesn't think it's false. He thinks it's true. So, if you, tell, if you ask him, hey, do you have any false data, any bad information about blah, blah? Oh, no, oh, nah, nothing. I know everything there is to know. No false data on me, no sir, never even saw one. Don't know what it is. You see? Because he doesn't know it's false. He thinks everything he knows is right. He might wonder once in a while why some things go wrong, but he can't afford not to think he's right. Because he'll crash and burn if he thinks he's maybe wrong, you see? And then he's operating off of false data. He's got the wrong idea about something. Everything keeps catching on fire. Whatever. You know, he just has emergency after emergency. So, anybody can see that if you operate off of false data, just in everyday life, how to drive a car, you get in a car wreck, you know, how to pour sugar, you pour too much in, how to cook a cake, and you burn the cake. Uh, you says, thought it was 16 hours, and it's only two. You come out with a piece of charcoal. Uh, so, Everything is full of this. Politics is full of it. You know, uh, 
where were they speak college and schools and everything uh, your friends got all kinds of ideas about how things are supposed to be but most of it's false data so most everything is not necessarily written it's just spread word of mouth uh, that's the main source of it, it's verbal data you don't have you didn't ever did read the book that says how to fill the concrete mixer you never read the instructions you're too smart for that you see so you tried it and then you had the concrete get hard and ruin the mixer because you're operating off the idea that I'm too smart for that or you know only real men don't read the instructions or some crazy idea see it's false data it's uh, but the guy that had success goes and reads the instructions has a correct data about how to pour concrete and everything and he does a pretty good job even though he may not even know how but the guy that thinks he knows how but really don't yeah, he's, he's just a disaster for everybody and it's very hard for a person to realize that they're wrong it's very hard to confront the fact that they could be wrong about something see they're already way too wrong and they're not going to admit to one more being wrong even though there's the path to their sanity if you don't realize that you're wrong you're never going to be right but it's uncomfortable to look at you see no no you know uh, just because I lost all my money and my business went boom and my wife left me yeah it was all their fault see the guys operating off false data and then justifying why telling you how it's okay for him to use this bad data trying to convince you that he had four and four and got nine and that nine was really the right answer see he's still fighting to keep this stable data alive he doesn't it's something he looks it's unquestioning he does not look at it you put him on an e-meter, a biofeedback device to tell what he's thinking, if it's charged or not, you know, and, and ask him, you know, what, do you have any false data on anything? Oh, no, uh, it'll just be floating. He's telling you absolute truth, you see. He doesn't know. He ain't got no idea. So your tool is gone. You don't have tools. Say, okay, what was that you just thought right there? What's that reading? Yeah, uh -huh, uh -huh. yeah what, what's that about there? You don't do that because you're not handling case you're not handling mental image pictures you're not handling anything but the being you see he's got he's a computer that's all he is is a living computer and he's got bad data it's false uh, of course as soon as he finds some he kicks it out you see that's the way the mind works the why the mind wants to work perfectly and the only reason it don't work perfectly because it's got wrong information whether it's unconscious information and you know wrong data is pretty much unconscious information and the worst part is you agree to it you said yep uncle bill yeah that's the way to go drink a quart of whiskey a day and smoke 10 packs of cigarettes live forever well that's what he thinks is a little kid well you know he kind of grows up out of that you know he gets to be an adult and he doesn't drink a whole quart of Jim Bean he only drinks a pint but he does like to have a case of beer too you see he's doing the same thing because he's trying to be Uncle Jim you see Uncle Jim saved him from something and gave him some false data you're like yeah you know he's a little bitty kid Uncle Jim gives him a watch that he just dearly wanted and, and uh, now Uncle Jim can do it all wrong and then Uncle Jim says yeah, I drink a quart of whiskey or a quart of vodka or something every day, and that's that's the way life goes. You know, that's good life. And so the little kid starts to think right there that, okay, drinking a quart of vodka gives you a good life, but it don't take him too long until he does drink a quart of vodka and get sick as a dog and realize maybe there's something a little bit wrong with this. This sure don't feel like a good life. This feels like a horrible hangover. So something is not really adding up, you see, it just, he did feel pretty good there for a while, 
See, but then he blocks out everything that doesn't align with the false data. Even though it's causing him misery and everything else, he's not going to look at that because that would make him wrong. And he can't be wrong, you see. He's got too little rightness as it is, and he's afraid he'll lose it. And what he doesn't recognize is that if he got rid of the bad data, the wrong data, the false data, that he would already be naturally more right. They look at it, and he says, got four apples, and he says, I think I got four apples. He sells four apples, so that's it. Everything's all done. The money comes in. Everything just flows beautifully, you see? But if he thinks he's got five or has three, he's going to have some difficulties. So I know I'm rambling about this thing, but the important thing is to, to learn that, you know, the whole society uh, and everybody in it is just filled with false data. You know, you look at all of the fairy tales. Those, those are all false data. They may be based on something, but basically it's a bunch of false data. Uh, you know, might is right. Uh, greed is bigger than the sword. And, you know, you the whole world is full of, you know, I'm right, and this is the way it is. What nobody ever looks for is the I'm wrong. They try to look for you're wrong and blame you or something, you see. But you never... And they never look inside themselves to see what's wrong. It takes a really bright man to realize that he's making mistakes and he's going to try to figure out how to fix it. So, anyway, the point is that the, the world is full of false data. And uh, so, now I'm going to go over some of the things here. I'm looking at a bulletin here on TV. Uh, some of the ways that you can get rid of this false data, the basic procedure and some of the commands and things that you would uh, try to use on somebody to dig up this false data. And it's not going to read on the meter, you see, because he doesn't even know it's false. He thinks it's true. So it takes a, uh, a lot of skill as a human being and being an auditor or being somebody that can control communication and don't, you know, Q&A and fool around with what the PC says and go off chasing butterflies. But just stick to this simple procedure. Just remember a time when. And don't do nothing but that. And lo and behold, this data will all of a sudden uncover. And the guy will realize it's false and it's gone. And if you're lucky, you got the book that says, oh, no, you know, four cherries to a pound, not five cherries, and show it to him so he gets some true data. Now there's an interesting thing what happens whenever somebody gets false data before true data. And that's going to be this next next little part of the, the lecture. This is, you know, one of the early Greek philosophers. Uh, anyway, let me, I'm going to take a short break here and then I'm going to get back to this video. Alright, so when a person has false data on a subject, you're trying to teach him to be a carpenter, and he's got a lot of weird ideas, like cows are upside down, and he uses the hammers to stir the concrete. He's got a lot of false data. You're trying to teach him how to do a job. Maybe he has no data. Uh, but he does not do it well in the job. See, he thinks that you got to pour the concrete and then drive the nails, and he can't drive nails into concrete. Um, and you try to teach him, and, and that's not that seems to work, you see. You try to teach this guy, you show him over and over, and he screws it up over and over and over. Every time, he never does get it right. So finally, you have to fire him. There's no other choice as an administrator. You just out the door and get a guy in that can do the job. You want a guy that can pour concrete. You, want a, you don't want a guy that loses all the nails, you see. So maybe that's what he thought. That if you drove the nail in properly, the concrete was, uh, oh God knows he, what data he was operating off of. You see, real men don't pour concrete. I don't know. It doesn't make any difference. He had, you tried to teach him. You tried to teach him the hat, the job, the post, the title. It wouldn't stick, you see. So you get rid of him. Well, that's how normal everyday life, that's how everything gets, that's how you get stabbed, see. Now, it's much easier just to handle the false data than it is to try to get staff. 
You see, because you're just going to get another guy that's probably got false data too. So uh, the society's full of it. Now this is the idea behind this comes from Socrates. All right, he was 470 BC to 399. You know, he lived 80 years, 400 years before Christ. And what they said that if you got two datums, you got one datum that says this, and you got another datum that says that. The first datum is the thesis. This is the thesis, the main idea, the thing, the postulated statement. This is what we think is true, or a datum of some sort. And an antithesis is something that says the opposite. See, we see classic definition of a problem. Well, what happens, of course, when you got a problem, you got a mass, and a thetan puts significance on that mass to make sense out of this confusion. He's got one dam says this, he's got another dam says something else, they're not working out, he's confused. So he forms a synthesis an idea that explains both datums and now neither one of them makes sense you see if if he's got he had a bad datum and then he's confronted with a true datum this one don't make sense and this one don't make sense so he just stuck he don't do anything he doesn't act at all he doesn't do the wrong thing and he don't do the right thing he just stops because he's confused until he comes up with some things to this, some combination of these two ideas, and then maybe he'll operate off of that. And God help him if he has some success with it, because then it becomes law to him. This uh, idea that he come up with is senior to either one of the data, and he needs to know that this one's false data, and this one's a true data, and this synthesis is not necessary. Uh, it's also part of the mass, it's solid, and uh, he's got a meaning on it, and it's part of his mind, and he don't really need that. He just needs the true data. He doesn't need to carry around a big old mental, heavy, concrete picture saying something. When If you just had the true data, you put the nail down, then you put the concrete. So, what happens is... See, this is what happens when he's already picked up some false data. Santa Claus is going to come as a little kid, you see. Now you're trying to teach him later on to hang the Santa just right on the front of the store uh, or something. And he's having a lot of trouble here with Santa. You know, Santa should be, I don't know, stand upside down in the bed of the sleigh or something. I don't know, he's got some kind of idea and he's not really doing a very good job with hanging Santa up or his lights or whatever job he's doing. Now he's got this false datum that Santa goes in upside down in the sleigh. And then you try to teach him. You try to teach him. No, that, look, that don't even make no sense. Look, why his head's down on the full board? How can you see? You know, he should be setting up straight so he can see and hold and but Santa's supposed to be upside down. See, it doesn't make any sense to him now that Santa's upside down, and it don't make any sense to him that Santa's setting up right. He can't make up his mind about anything. He don't know if it's right or wrong, and he quits. And then, so, the harder you try to teach him that Santa sets right side up, the worse did you make the other side solid. See, because you're just pressing one force problem against another force problem and the confusion is just greater for him. Bigger mass, harder to move around on his head and it just gets stuck. So he'll make this synthesis. Yeah, he'll come up with some idea that uh, this is how this thing works. Okay, now what he's trying to do, he's trying to handle his life now with a false, unworkable synthesis, some idea he made up or his thinkingness, his ability to think on the subject, just locks up. He stops. Either case, he's got this false synthesis or he just won't think. He's impossible to train. Uh, this is kind of where glibness comes in, where they just parrot back the answers. Blah, 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 blah. But then they go to try to do it and they got a clue how to do it. You see? Um... Uh,
he it just it doesn't make any difference. But basically, he wouldn't have to be glib. See, he's already got all the data, but he's not applying it. You see, he's got some kind of false data there. It's okay to know everything, you see, but it doesn't really matter in the real world. You know, there's no reason for me to try to apply this. It's just in books anyway, or I'm going to be a teacher, and who cares? He's got some kind of false data, and he's going to have problems in that area. So... Let me take a short break here, review a little bit of this bulletin, and we'll go into the next point. All right. Uh, now, you go try to find this false data on why a guy keeps pouring in the concrete wrong or something like this. You start asking him about where did you learn to do that and what makes you think it's this way and what makes you think it's that way. And you won't be able to easily detect it. If you put him on a meter and try to find, do you have any false information about how to or concrete, you know, sit there and say, no, you don't, you know, and the meter will just be useless, you know, because he doesn't know that it's false data. So there's a little technique here that you can get him to find something else, you see. <coughs> He's not going to go for a false data. You don't even know what it is. So you have to have a little technique to get him to find something that he can find that sits right on top of the false data. So you ask him if he's anything that he's run across about the subject that he couldn't think with, you see. Didn't seem to add up. Or it seems to be in conflict with some other information. Uh, you know, whatever you're trying to teach him. Or you just basically go, well, in the subject of foreign concrete, you ever found anything that seemed to be in conflict? Go, oh, yeah, you know, I try to drive nails in it after it's hard and don't really make sense you see it, it don't add up it I think maybe that nail should go on the bottom see now he said right smack on top of that false data he don't even know it yet he's still telling you yeah I you know you're supposed to put the nail in last but I don't see how that works because you know a nails hard to put into concrete he hasn't spotted that he even has false data, but you have spotted that he has false data. Now the trick's to get him to look at it, you see. So you ask him, well, on the subject of concrete, is there anything that uh, you couldn't think with? Or on the subject of your job selling uh, propellers to uh, airplanes, uh, is there anything there you couldn't think with? You know, anything there that didn't seem to add up? Yeah, I always wonder why the propellers were twisted this way. I thought they should go the other way. And see, and the under there, you're going to have some false data that says which way the propellers are supposed to be twisted. He don't know that. He thinks he knows the right way, but he don't do anything. And he's a terrible mechanic, you see, on propellers. So, but this is a little trick of getting the person to find this false data. It buries itself pretty well. Now, the next point here now the way to get rid of this false data is you don't go in there bashing and try and teach him the new one that's already gave him a problem you see that's not what we need to do uh, we have to do just elementary straight wire straight recall that's all straight wire from him to a memory in the past yesterday whatever a week ago 10 years ago however far he can remember ago he'll have he, if he's got problems with an area he's going to have some kind of memory of something going wrong you see something he didn't like something he didn't agree with something didn't make sense wasn't adding up one datum said one thing and joe said something and bill said the opposite and i don't know which one to believe so i don't do anything so he just comes to a dead stop. So, straight wire is a way that you go back. Straight wire, meaning memory, straight recall, is a way you just go back. Very simple commands. Very easy for the guy to do. He's He knows all about it. He'll tell you right away, blah, blah, blah. blah. Yeah, I never did figure that one out. And so th this is the procedure or this is some of the things that you're going to see in this person that has false data okay you try to train him on something and he just cannot be trained you know he just never does to get it uh you look and you try to find big huge misunderstood words he think concrete is birds or something now nah, that's not there and you give him your stuff over and over and he just don't seem to get it 
or he's doing his job and he's not doing too good and and he tells you something weird about some one of his old jobs or something that don't make no sense you know he says oh yeah well you know our manual isn't right you know the book of job chapter 14 says god gonna come down in a burning bush you know i got other data about that you know there ain't no such thing as blah 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 it's a, he, he keeps telling you about other people no matter what is going on he says well joe says and bill says or i read in a book once or i, I saw on tv or Bill and Mary and all of them guys over there drunk at the park, you know, they all they all know that blah 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 blah. So he, he doesn't never give you any true data. I counted four cherries, there's really five, but they all told me there was five, you know. Uh, he can't do anything, and then if you force him to try to do it, he don't want to do it, and he can't think. You know, he goes to try to add up the cherries and yes, he makes a terrible job. There's five barrels and he says there's three barrels or something. Uh, so this guy is, is a problem to himself. He's a problem to everybody else. And it's because basically he's hanging around. He's hanging on to old solutions to problems, you know, synthesis. You know, one idea versus another idea couldn't figure it out and he's hanging on to it. Now, there's a certain set of questions that you use in a certain order that picks up just about anything on the, that will lead you to this false datum, you see. Is there anything you come across the subject that you couldn't think with? That's the first one. Can't think. Oh, that don't make sense. That didn't seem to add up. See, it wasn't, it wasn't all figuring out for him. It wasn't adding up to be what something's wrong here, you see. Something about the subject that seems to be in conflict. In other words, one thing says something and something says something else. You know, Bill says come in early and the book says go home late. I don't know what's the deal here. Um, did you come across the data and the subject you had no use for? Uh, yeah, it says, you know, you're supposed to put water in the concrete. You know, everybody knows that Coca-Cola makes it harder. I mean, it didn't really make much sense because Coca-Cola was costing him a fortune to pour into the concrete. It's not making sense. Or some data didn't seem to fit in. Here it says fruit, 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 and then you got a uh, computer color TV. Well, what kind of fruit is this? You know, it's just not making sense here. It don't fit in. Do you know of any datum that makes it unnecessary for you to do a good job, you see? Oh, yeah, well, you know, they can't fire me. I've been here forever. I don't have to do a good job. You know, I'll just take my retirement. And See, you got no more false data up there. He, that's going to track him down to that other data. And then he kind of knows that it's a bad product. And next question is, you know any reason why a bad product is all right, you see? Why should you pour bad cement? Well, you know, a customer doesn't really know anyway. And you're right down the trail of that false data. Uh, would you be made wrong if you learned the subject? Yeah, all the other kids would laugh at me if I was too smart, you see. Or anybody ever explained it to you verbally? Tell you about it, not really show you the book on it or the true data but just told you how to do it says so go over there and put the concrete in the nails and left you were verbally had it you see they told you how to do it maybe it's data maybe it's not anyway, if there's no data bad data there you go oh yeah yeah bill told me to do that you know he said that nails always floated best or something you know he he remembers there was something there you know that you know whatever know of any conflicts with the standard tech you know how to build an airplane and somebody put a mickey mouse cartoon colored page in there and it says paint it red but over here on the other page it says paint it green do you think you really know best oh yeah i've been in college for ten thousand years and uh i don't have to look at anything i already know see he knows best he knows how it's supposed to go and it's false data, you see. I know best about this, but he still has trouble with it. Uh, is this subject not worth learning? That's a good one, you see. 
trying to teach him how to pour concrete. He's oh, it's not even worth learning. Uh, I'll never use this, and how's this going to apply? We all have that in our life as little kids. We're looking at some subject, you know, whatever it is, geometry, math, history, you know, science, music, something. You know, we're sitting there bored to death as a little kid. Oh, man, you know, boy, I don't see any reason for me to learn this shit, you know. Why should I just wait here? See, you don't do anything. You just wait. And I'll get through it somehow. And, but... You know, it's not even worth learning. It's not worth my time even being here. See, well, that's going to lead you to false data. Somebody told him that it wasn't worth learning, and that's the very instructions of how it's supposed to be doing his job. He's, he, it's not worth learning to learn that the saw cuts wood when you go push back and forth on it a certain way and not when you bang on it with a little tiny what you think are axe, axe blades or something. It's a saw. You push it back and forth, you know. So this is basically how you, these 14 questions, are how you could find false data on this, this subject of his job or whatever it happens to be. Uh, there's quite a bit of ways that you can go back and, and you can peel these things off in layers. You know, you, you, he gets a couple ideas about whatever the job is and uh, gets it straightened out and goes, oh wow, Melis, that's pretty good, you know, and he goes and he has pretty good success, but in a few days, he's found to be making a bunch more mistakes. Well, it's because he had a lot of false data. He didn't just have one or two, he had a whole bunch. And now he's a little smarter, and he's starting to look and see, well, wait a minute, you know, I've got some false data here over how much water. Should I put water or coke in the concrete? And on over here, should we put sand or gravel in the concrete? I didn't really understand either one of those. You see, now he got more data. So you can track it down. Well, where did you, who told you to put coke in? Oh, Bill, you know, where was Bill? You know, where was he exactly? Oh, he was standing there by the loader. And what color shirt did he have on? Oh, it was a red shirt. You know, a big cheerful guy, you know. Everybody liked old Bill. And he told me that good Coca-Cola is good, is blah, blah. Oh, here's a good one. You know, you see some. Man, they tell you some sexual joke, you know, about the, the way to really get women is uh, drink a gallon of Coke and drink 50 beers. I don't know, some idea they got, you know, some data that's not necessarily true. And you're kind of in awe or admiration and you don't know anything and then you soak up that datum and it's false, you know. And it gives you troubles later whenever you come across a true rhythm and you neither one of them make no sense and so you quit. You know, guy doesn't understand girls, doesn't understand girls. Well, he's already got false data there. You see, he's already saying, I can never understand girls. You see, he's got a whole bunch of those and, you know, of course he can understand girls. He can, if he can't understand girls, he can't understand men either and he can't understand pigs or chickens or adults or, he just can't understand, period. It's got nothing to do with girls. Because he said he don't understand. He's got a lot of false data there. You know, he says, oh, I don't know. Well, then you got, if you even were exposed to the subject, you have false data. I just don't understand women. I don't understand men. That's crazy. You know, it's false data. Of course you can understand women. Of course you can understand men. You can understand anything in a whole universe. There's nothing you cannot understand. There is nothing beyond understanding. Trust me. There is false data that don't make any sense. But there's nothing that you cannot understand. And there's nothing you cannot understand and apply to everyday life. And that's where this part of this happiness rundown comes in, you see. You got certain laws towards survival. Survival of self, you know, family life, sex, children. You know, you got jobs and work and people around you and things you live in. You got your car and your house and these all operate off some kind of laws and you have to pay taxes and build things and do this and that and you got work. And, you know, you got the whole physical universe. We don't want to kill the planet and poison off everything. And uh, you got, you have eight dynamics, you see, that you are actually got a job. That's your job. That's who you are. You said, I'm going to do this and then you took off to do it and then here it is a long time later and you have a little difficulty here and there 
you know most likely you've had so much difficulty that you only see two or one or three big difficulties the rest of them are completely unconscious you see well, I'm really worried about my wife you know what about every other dynamic how about yourself and your job and car and he don't even notice that his cars falling apart they're about to fire him the dogs growl at him when he walks by every time he cuts himself it takes him six months to heal up all the germs are against him he, you know, he got this false data that blah 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 and he can't see the other dynamics so these are his job these are just eight separate areas it is his job if he's going to survive if he's going to do well and have a little bit of pleasure and not a lot of pain then he's got to do his job along those dynamics doing his work job that's only an eighth even if not even that it's just work you see part of a th fourth dynamic or third dynamic groups and you know uh, to some degree mankind because your product is helping other people but it's a little bit of th something you know it's not all of life now false data is difficult for most people to find because they don't know they have false data they don't even really know what false data is you see they don't even have a definition of false data really they don't even consider that they're operating off of data most people don't even realize that their mind is a computer and they're running the thing they think they are the mind and the computer and the thing you see they're really socked into their head so it may take a little while to get you to dig the guy out to where he sees he has a mind and that mind is operating off of data and that might not be making all the right decisions now well, he'd probably admit that well yeah you know sometimes you know i wonder maybe i mean i might have made a mistake or something I don't know, false data, boom, you're going to run right down there, you see. But these 14 questions are basically just to, un to uncover false data. You're just asking him about something. Remember something? How about this? Did you ever have that? Anything didn't make sense? Something didn't add up? Somebody ever say this was the wrong way? Uh, anybody ever tell you how this worked? You know, you know something else about it that says it's wrong you know you just use communication skills you don't just robotically ask the guy a question you can just robotically tr3 repeat it repeat it anyone ever explain the subject of this to you anyone ever explain the subject to anyone else explain the subject to this to you anyone you know that you knew of explain this subject to you Instead of, well, did anybody ever tell you about it? Anybody ever explain it? Anybody ever tell you how to do it? Somebody ever, uh, you know, give you good ideas how to do this? Did anybody tell you the best way to go about doing this? You see, you're just trying to figure out somebody verbally telling the guy how to do it. And if there's false data, he'll tell you, oh, yeah, Bill or Mama or Uncle Paul. Yeah. They said to grab the bottle of beer, drink the whole thing first, and then drink the whiskey after. But, you know, boy, that was really bad. It seemed to be a lot better to drink the whiskey and then drink the beer because it didn't burn so bad. I never did figure that one out. So, blah, 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 blah. Right away, he starts giving you some area that he's, he's got uh, false data on and he's having trouble with. This tape's probably getting a little long, but I wanted to make it this is a couple days worth of lecture and, and drills and things to get people to be able to see false data, to see how this synthesis, uh, thesis, antithesis, synthesis idea comes about, how that relates directly to them and how, and how their life is, could be better if this false data was gone. Uh, and a very basic, easy, easy, easy technique to do, just remember when you were standing by mama yeah how far was it oh a couple feet you know what color dress was she wearing oh red what were you doing oh i was a little kid playing in the dirt what, where was she oh she was standing there in the doorway talking to the neighbor 
And what was she doing? Oh, she was peeling potatoes. And what she looked like? Oh, she had a big green dress with red flowers. And she always smelled so good. And laughed, laughed. Okay, that's easy. That's easy as pie to go back and find out a couple things about something. Now, false data stripping has a very specific way of handling each one of these 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 datums uh, because you're only trying to uncover the data to the point the guy can figure out for himself that it's false See, you're not telling him what's right or what's wrong that's what's wrong with him is everybody tried to tell him what was right or wrong he needs to figure out what's right or wrong for himself you see he's got to get the correct data that's all he's perfectly well and once you run a few of these things and he starts to realize that boy you know I might have a lot of false data about things no wonder blah I wonder if that's how come I can't blah 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 a couple of days he's come back and spouting all kinds of crap to you that he found the guy on the bus told him this you know and his mom's always been saying that and then Nelly oh man she, grandma is always telling me don't do this and do that and my job oh man and, and all of a sudden in the newspaper do you know the newspaper is full of false data whoa look at that I didn't know that he's gonna find lots of false data well you don't really care I mean you guess good for him you know if you want to uh, to pay and get it all sorted out that'd be good you know you should do that you should you know get all false data especially anything to do with living or life or your bank account or especially about your life really you know the things that you survive about this is where you should be first looking for false data you don't really care about false data about trees you know you're not a tree guy but you know you got false data about pouring battery acid under the trees instead of getting rid of it right you're gonna have some troubles along the line along the dynamics because you got false data you know battery acid not good for trees and you know not good for you either but he's so you see what I mean basically this false data stripping is very easy to do now I'm gonna take a little break my throat's getting a little hoarse here I haven't talked so much in a while and uh, I'm going to go over this last little part of the, of the commands here to, to find this. It's a very easy thing to do. All right, so here's the procedure that you use to false data strip. Now, I'm not going to go into a great detail in this video. Most of this was about just getting a person to realize what false data was, <coughs> how it might affect them. So you use one of these 14 questions. You ever find anything about this, whatever area he's having trouble with, you know, his job. Anything about your job that you couldn't think with, didn't add up, didn't make sense. Somebody told you something different until you find something. And he'll say, oh, yeah, blah, 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 blah. He's a carpenter. Yeah, you know, the guy that taught me how to saw boards, you know. There was something there he told me didn't make sense. He told me that those were little hatchet things. And... I should chop the line and then start to saw. It turns out that what he's doing now, he's chopping, he's missing the line. And the real datum is that you put the saw right on the line and get it started or something. It's not an axe, it's a saw. And the true datum is that ain't the way you do it. You do it another way because that way you can cut the board straight every time. And he, he just cuts crooked boards all the time because he's chopping and sawing. So when you find it, then there's a set of questions that you ask them. Very standard questions. Is, Where did it come from? Oh, that was uh, Uncle Bill. He told me how to do it. Yep, it come from Uncle Bill. And you ask him, when was it? Oh, you know, 71, 78, I don't know. No, take a look there. You know, when exactly was it? Well, you know, I think I was 16, so... That was probably when I was thinking, well, you no, know, was this in your summer vacation or were you at school or, oh, no, yeah, it was this summer, you know, Uncle Bill was helping us build the porch. Must have been about June sometime. It was really hot. See, that's what you're doing. You're trying to get him, when was it? Not just, you know, it was over there someplace, maybe. You know, he said, oh, yeah, it was 4th of July. I never will forget that. My uncle told me how to, well, that's what you want. When was it? And then... You find out this where was this data? Where did it come from? A book? Did it come from a person? Uh, 
television? Where, where did you get this data? He knows. And he'll say, oh, no, it was from Uncle Bill. It was from Uncle Bill. That's who it was. Then you ask him, well, where were you? Exactly. You get it that. You know, I was standing, I was sitting down and playing by the fire, and Uncle Bill was uh, showing my big brother how to do it. That's what was happening. And so, okay, well, what were you doing? Well, I was just sitting there watching. You know, I was just sitting on the ground and watching, and I remember the smell of wood shavings. And then you ask him, well, what was the person doing? He says, oh, Uncle Bill, he was teaching my brother, you know, this. he was showing him how to saw and this and that and the other thing. And then how did he look? How did the person look? What did the book look like? What did the television look like? Oh, it was brown, you know, it was black and white and doing this and that and the other thing. And I remember it was a green wall. And our Uncle Bill, he was wearing blue pants and I remember he had real red hair, you see. And he's pretty happy about that because he found something. But you don't want him to just find something. He's going to spot the fact that he has false data. And he will spot it. And so if it's not blown right there, if he doesn't go, oh, wow, no wonder, you know. He told me to whack the saw. No wonder it don't make no sense, you see. I always wanted to be like him. And so I just thought that was the way you did it, you see. All of a sudden, now you show him. No, you put it against your thumb and move it slow. And he goes, oh, man, that makes a lot of sense. No wonder I was having trouble. And now he'll be able to do the job again. But these are just uh, seven questions, you know. Where was the person at? What was he doing? Where were you? What were you doing? And what was the person? What did they look like? What did the book look like? What did the ground look like? And he just let him look it over. You don't tell him anything. And he don't get it. Well, it was an earlier time, you know, that uh, you ran across something didn't add up. Earlier, similar false datum, you know, whacked the wood into the... Yeah. Well, you know, I did seem to think something about that you know the, my uncle john used to whack the plow into the ground and uh, uh i never did understand why he got crooked rows turns out uncle john was drunk all the time that's why he got crooked rows whacking the plow into the ground had nothing to do with it that was probably good who knows but it's an earlier datum see but something didn't add up there everybody says uncle john's the best plowman in the world but all of his rows look like snakes track it just didn't make sense to him, you see. But, well, what were you at the time? Well, I was smacking the mule, and what were you doing? I was driving the mule and doing this, not and the other thing. And where was he? Oh, he was standing in the back of the wagon, uh, throwing out hay. And, uh, what, you know, what was his appearance? Oh, he had on overalls, and I remember the hay was green, and... He always had a red neck, and he was very cheerful, and he always had a bottle of vodka with him, you know. And he told me that uh, the only way to plow is to have a quart of vodka first. Uh, then he may see the, the, he finds that first date of me, go, oh, wow, no wonder I can't. Man, you know, not only am I whacking the board with a saw, like a hatchet instead of a saw, I'm also drinking a quart of whiskey a day because I want to be like the first guy and then I wanted to be like the second guy. See, all of a sudden he realizes, son of a bitch, I got two false data there. I got one false datum about, you know, whacking the saw. The worst one was the earlier one when I got whacking the plow and drink a quart of vodka or whiskey or whatever it is. You see, whatever the false datum he got. You know, Mama didn't have a had problem, got a divorce, and then, then when he was a little kid, his uh, Aunt Mary got a divorce, and, and they said, men are no good, and that's why she's sitting there thinking men are no good and don't have one, or him, or whatever. They got false data on the subject, or they can't saw the wood, they can't pour the concrete, or they can't do the job, they can't sell the clothes, they can't drive the car. See, so that's how you strip false data off. So this would be a big help to administrators, anybody that had the brains to sit down and look at this simple little video, study it a couple hours, and even just go try it on their worst 
of their employees would have big success if they would just do this. It's the simplest thing in the world. You could set up a business consultant business and just go around and improve things simply by just going in the corporation is running great well, fine you make it run better you see there's got to be some false data in there uh, of course anybody that's having trouble with their job or their life or in any particular area uh, then you can go in there and handle it but the main thing that this false data technique not this whole long 14 question technique but this is what's used on the happiness rundown this finding of false data that are about living a happy life uh, not necessarily his work you know he might have so much about his work it is ruining his life I don't know but basically we want him across all the dynamics himself his family his groups his his living things, his house and car and spirits and things that go boom in the night and whatever he thinks is God and it's all firing on all cylinders and all of it makes sense. People tell me, oh, I have no false data. And I say, all right, well, point to God. Go ahead, where is he? Point, you know, come on, point. Well, he's everywhere. Oh, that ain't pointing, dude. That ain't giving me some location of some source. So you're going to have some kind of false data. You can't find it. Well, you know, everybody knows that you're supposed to wear green. Well, point to that fact. You know, where where is this proof at? Where, where, who said you had to wear green? See, right away, you're straight wearing the guy right into, well, you know, everybody knows. Well, who's everybody, you know? Who do you know most that would have said that? Straight wire, you know. Figure out where does this false data come from? You're right on top of it. Don't let him tell you how oh, it makes sense. You don't care. It don't make sense. It don't make sense to you, and you don't really don't care what he thinks because he's got false data. But once you figure out, you know, anything you didn't make sense or didn't add up, whatever, oh, you know, yeah, yeah, sure, this didn't make any sense. And you blow this false data, and all of a sudden now you're able to teach him the true data. All of a sudden the guy couldn't be trained. You're gonna have to fire him. You just kept screwing things up. Now you run, strip a bunch of false data off the guy a few hours, put him back in the training program. Whoa, he's your best salesman. You see, or you take you know medium salesman and strip him off, and he becomes a good salesman. You know, you take a good salesman and strip off all his false data and he becomes the best manager around. You see, you can only improve a being. You can't make them worse by getting rid of wrong answers in their head. So anyway, I've, this is a long video again, but, uh, you know, I got a lot of my preaching in here, but I think all of this data is very important. I'm only really covering about three things here. You know, what false data is, how a person can be trained over the top of it, this thesis, this synthesis idea, fixed idea, handles of confusion, they get stuck to it, they can't perform, they can't apply what they learned, they got false data. This is 14 questions to find an area that they know about, that there is false data. And then you have the eight questions that get you to look at the person or the book or the datum or whatever and spring the guy out of it, you see, so he can look at it and go, oh, that don't make no sense. You see, what did make sense was I was only six years old and you know, I thought Uncle Bill knew everything. No wonder I was so bad, you know. I loved Uncle Bill. I wanted to be like him. See, and all of a sudden it starts to make sense. All of a sudden he can saw wood straight or he can count five cherries and come up with five cherries. So anyway, I've ran on here, but I hope you enjoyed this video. So this is going to be about two or three days of the Russian clinic. The first day is going to be just getting people to understand what false data is and give me some examples from life and this and that and the other thing. Uh, then go actually find some false data and, and drill these 14 questions until you can uh, just about anybody on any subject you know just go find some false data and then of course uh, there'll be a couple lectures or classes there where people are actually had it and how to run just pure straight wire remember these these things where was he where was it where was a book 
where were you, what were you doing, what was he doing, what colors were there, you know, what was the appearance of the thing. Straight wire, simple, 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 and you don't get, oh, wow, the reason blah, 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 well, there's something earlier. So you just say, well, it was earlier, similar, same, similar, earlier, similar, similar data. False data, I see here. Is there something else, another earlier incident like that, or something earlier you couldn't think with? That's always the best one. See, if you start, you, your question was couldn't think, then was earlier similar data you got that you couldn't think with? Oh, well, you know, maybe blah, 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 blah. You just keep on in who, what, where, when, what it looked like, and a uh, guy going, uh huh, that feels better. No EP, see. Well, it's an earlier similar false to him. It's an earlier similar time you found something you couldn't think with. And then finally, he'll find the earliest one. And you'll go, oh, wow, no wonder, blah, 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 blah. And he'll tell you, I do that today. No wonder I have so much trouble cutting wood or, you know, finding girlfriends or pouring concrete or whatever it is that the guy's having trouble with. So, anyway, I hope you like this. I know it's a little long, but I think it's a lot of good data in... Uh, I'm putting it on YouTube because I think it will be good for other businesses and I have a few people that watch me and things and uh, uh, maybe this might do somebody else good but for sure this is going to be a required video and it will go in a DVD package and be translated into Russian so this is, uh, this is just Tommy saying thanks a lot for watching I hope it does you some good and uh, I'll see you soon bye bye